The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining our webinar today. This is the Listing Book Agent Success Series. And at Listing Book, we are committed to agent excellence. So we've brought to you today uh, two leaders in the social media marketing industry, Jordan Shelton and Justin Kirby with Cave Social. Jordan and Justin are both contributors to Inman News. Um, they have a lot of expertise both within the real estate industry, real estate marketing, and specifically social media marketing. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan for today's webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Nadine. Thanks a ton. Um, guys, we're really, really excited to be here, Justin and I. Um, thank you for listening, Book, to for bringing us out and uh, inviting us to join this webinar series and hop on and teach you guys a little bit today. Today we are going to be focusing on mobile and marketing um, and how to really focus in on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter for real estate. Today too, we are going to, as much as we're going to go through a lot of big ideas, I want to make sure that you walk away with some actionable advice. So Justin and I will be chiming in uh, with actionable advice that we feel is really, really applicable to real estate and agents in particular. Then at the end, so you guys know, we are going to open it up. We are going to open it up for about a 15 to 20 minute Q&A. So you guys are feel free to fire away any questions throughout the webinar and we'll answer them there. Or if you have questions at the end, we'll do it as well. Um, but it can be on anything to do with social media, marketing, business, our favorite colors, you name it. So what are we going over today? We're going to be going over Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter specifically. So I know there's a ton of platforms out there that can be used from your phone. For the sake of this webinar, we really want to kind of hone in and focus in on these three and give you guys some, some tips on how you can use these three to facilitate and grow your business online. And I mean... Um, obviously, everyone's seen you know how large Twitter has gotten, but Instagram and Snapchat in particular, they're growing month over month at an enormous rate. So it's just a it's a really good idea to take a look at these networks, especially in the mobile space, because they really are mobile first apps. And and that's the whole the whole point behind it is they are mobile first. And if we look at where we're at today in the world, we have 3.5 billion toothbrushes on the right now in the world, and we have four billion phones. So people right now are putting priority on their cell phone over clean tea. And you can even see this where <laughs> <laughs> you have you know, only 2 billion desktops where Facebook, uh, you know, Google Plus, those are platforms, LinkedIn platforms that are desktop first. So we really want to look at the mobile first platform platforms and how you can best use them. And if we see that this trend, right, where we have over 55% of the world essentially has a phone in their in their hand and right now just for just for the humor me guys if you have a phone either you're on it right now texting and listening or if you have it within arm's reach can you just type into the chat and just say yes right so we had a, I would say oh it's it's getting up there probably 200 yeses have come in and about Five seconds. <laughs> so, guys, this really hammers hammers away the point, right? Is everyone's got their phone on them, and you're not alone. So, if you have your phone and you're using it, you're not alone. Everyone's got it, and this is from 15 year olds all the way to 65 plus, right? And this number, this growth, is it's because a large part to do with these applications, but also it's just the accessibility to phones. So, if we take a look here, right? This is a picture. Two pictures, one announcing the Pope and the new Pope in 2005, right? And you guys see, we see what one? I see one flip phone, right in the bottom right corner. And then in 2013, announcing the new Pope. That picture speaks more volumes than I ever could about our accessibility to tech and our infatuation with it as as consumers. Right. This is where we are. This is where we live. This is why these three apps and when we get into them are so important. Maybe not to getting your next sale, you know, a sale two weeks from now, but to getting a sale two years from now, to getting a sale 10 years from now. These are going to be the apps that really help drive your branding forward. So let's hop into it. 
right now, if you look at the home screen of your phone, right, your home screen is really telling. What it does is it's going to do three things for you. The home screen is either going to help you communicate, give you information, or entertain you. It, everything on your home screen, home screen is an application that does one of those three things. So when you can look at your home screen, and this is actually a physical screenshot of my home screen, you see here where my attention is shifting and what I want, right? Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, you see the WhatsApp, text, email, those are all on the home page. So this is what these are the things that are important to me. And I guarantee you if you look at your home screen right now, that'll that'll let you and lead you into what's important for you with regards to your accessibility and what you want quickly. What information do you want? So this is really telling, right? The apps on this home screen, these are probably the ones we should be paying attention to. And how do we use them to the best of our abilities? So in starting with that. And certainly I was certainly Snapchat and Instagram as well. I mean, when, when you think of these two apps, there's a reason that they're there. And it's because that they were built specifically with mobile in mind. These are websites or are apps that, you know, if in Instagram's case, barely have a website. And in Snapchat's, you know, it's inaccessible without one. So they really are built with the phone or the tablet in mind. Um, and in, in, in that case, they give their audience a really good user experience. So th they're great products, um, thus why they're featured on so many home screens around the world. For sure. And that's exactly it, right? They're built mobile first because that's where users are going is mobile first. So let's hop into Twitter. And right now, right, if you have a Twitter, I think this is probably pretty common practice, right? You got a Twitter account maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago. You, you did some tweets, you, you followed some people, and, you know, you were really active for a month, maybe two months, maybe three months, but you never really got any traction on it. Um, if you have a Twitter account, but you see it as kind of a waste of time or it hasn't really produced any tangible results for you, can you just type a yes into the, into the, the chat box? Right. So once again, we're getting the, the, the same response as when we asked where the phones are. This is the story that is really, 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 um, really common with Twitter. Um, we just had a question come in in the midst of that all asking if this is being recorded. It is. So do not worry. It is being recorded. If we go over anything too quickly, uh, you can always go back and watch it again. But yeah, to get back on track. This is the, the common story of Twitter is I made a Twitter, I threw some tweets out, nothing really happened, right? So what I want to do is give you some actionable, actionable advice right now to grow your Twitter following. So these next two things are going to increase your Twitter reach and make you have connections through Twitter. So the first one is using the at symbol. So what the at symbol is, and using it properly, what the at symbol is, is the at symbol allows you to mention people. So you see at the top up here, I said at Inman News. Always good working on content for agents. Hashtag pumped. I was pretty pumped at the time. Um, what you see though, and what the problem with this tweet is, is only people who are following me and Inman News will get to see this tweet. So I have 1,500 or so followers. Inman has, I don't know, 150,000 or something. and the crossover between us is probably, you know, 30 people, maybe, maybe 25, 40. So anyways, when I tweet this, I'm only putting my message out to potentially 25 to 40 people. Now, there's a way to get around this. If you, if you add a character before the at symbol, you will reach everyone in your following. So everyone that you potentially could reach, you will. So simply, if you see down here, I put a dot at Inman News. Pro tip, adding a character or word before the at symbol allows everyone who follows you to see your tweets. This is what you need to do to increase, to increase your reach. And if you start doing this, if you're a power Twitter user and you didn't know about this, trust me, I found out about this about a year ago and it changed my life with regards to Twitter analytics impressions, seeing, oh my, oh my goodness, you know, I, I'm going to get so much more return from this because so if I'm giving a, a tip to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, that could be valuable to other people in my audience, right? So we want to make sure that we're putting out 
putting our best foot forward and really looking at getting the biggest return and getting the most impressions we can. Where this is even more important, we talked about the next part here we're going to talk about is utilizing Twitter search to build connections. So once we build these connections, which I'm going to go over next, we want to make sure that we use the at symbol properly. So Twitter search. This is honestly, it's your new best friend. So many people use Twitter and they never use Twitter search. They have no idea how it works. They, they just go on Twitter, check their feed, send out some tweets, right? So what Twitter search is, is if you go on Twitter and you go to this, this little magnifying glass here, you can search for anything and everything on Twitter. And you can search for hashtags. So you could search for, you know, hashtag um, Los Angeles, hashtag real estate. Or what you can see I did here is I actually typed in a sentence. So I typed in, got a new job, Raleigh, right? I wanted to say, okay, who's, who's tweeting about their new jobs? So we go through, this is literally um, a screenshot of people who are tweeting out, hey, I got a new job in Raleigh. Hey, I got a job. Uh, my husband got a job in Raleigh, you know, all these things. So people who get new jobs from out of town, what do they do, right? They move. Or if you hear that a, a big company is putting on a big, big round of hiring, go search for got hired at Dell or got hired at, at Apple, whatever it is. And you can go through and see people who are talking about getting a job and having to move. Those people are potential clients. This can be the same thing. You can go right now into Twitter and type in moving to and put in your county or your city. And then you'll go through and you'll see all of these people. Now, the beautiful thing about this, you can connect with these people. You can tweet at them. But please, please, I, I've given you guys this, this weapon, and you have to use it responsibly, okay? So what that means is if you're going to tweet at somebody, say it's, it's Christine Dobbin here, right? We're going to go, and we're going to tweet at her. Don't come in guns blazing. Don't come in and say, at Christine, hey, if you're moving to Raleigh, let me know. Let me be your realtor, right? Don't do that. Because she's going to see that as spammy and annoying. Her phone, her, she's going to get a buzz that goes off in her pocket that's seen as annoying. What you can do, tweet at her and say, excited to join you to the, excited to join you to the community. You're going to love it here. I've lived here for 10 years, whatever that may be, right? When you get to town, make sure you check out the something something park. Whatever it is, be a human being, be normal, as if you were to meet this person at you know a holiday party right you wouldn't walk in and just say i'm a real estate agent buy with me you would say hey how are you what why are you moving what brought you here be engaging these people can read christine can read she's going to click your profile because she doesn't have tons of people tweeting her she's going to click your profile and say hey, who's this person you know who's susie smith that's tweeting me and she's going to go and click and see your profile if your profile then is done up properly has your website has your phone number says you are you know you've been a realtor for 10 years in the area She's smart. Light bulbs are going to click in her head. It's going to say, hey, this person's up to date with mar modern marketing methods. They reached out to me in a non-invasive way, invasive way on Twitter. They seem friendly. They know the area. Okay, maybe there's a business relationship here. So this is something you can really, really take advantage of, but it has to be done tastefully. So play around with it. I urge you to spend 15, 20 minutes just playing around with it um, and seeing what you can find. Next, we're going to talk about Instagram um, and kind of an Instagram 101. So for those of you who don't know about Instagram, uh, it is Facebook's photo sharing app. They bought it. It's got about 400 million users. Uh, you can post quick photos with nice filters, or you can post 15-second videos on Instagram. One of the things that we really suggest to do for Instagram users is to make sure that you're posting often. So if you see a moment that you think, oh, hey, this is really cool. You're with a client. You just sold, say they just sold a property or you helped them find their dream house. Hey, guys, let's take a selfie. If you're out at a client dinner, honestly, it's one of these things. You just got to be willing to get over it. Say, let's take a selfie. Let's take a photo. Get someone to take a photo of you. And really, really humanize it as you go and you put your stuff on, on Instagram. The next part of Instagram, for anyone who's on there, use hashtags wisely. So... 
hashtags are a way of categorizing photos. So if you put hashtag, you, you know, New York uh, in a caption of a photo, everyone else who put that hashtag could then click that and see most popular photos. But what we want to do, we want to use hashtags, but we want to use about two or three. And then what we want to do is we want to actually location tag. So if this is going, if this is all too much right now, um, bear with me. But for those of you who are Instagram power users, power users, this is a very valuable tip. What you want to do is actually tag the location that you're in. So Instagram gives you that ability. And then other people who are in the area who are also checking in and in that location will be able to see your photos and search for the top photos in, say, Seattle or whatever it may be. Next with Instagram. If you're on Instagram and you want to promote a property, right, you want to go and you want to promote a new listing that you have, here's what you're going to do. You're going to use an app called Layout. So you're going to go, you're going to download the, lap, the app called Layout. What it's going to do is it allows you to make quick collages of photos. So you're going to make a collage of a property. Instead of posting six individual posts on Instagram about, you know, here's the kitchen, here's the master bedroom, backyard, etc. You're going to put them all in a collage. So it's a great way to tastefully put together um, a listing presentation on Instagram. And if you guys, if you guys take a look at the uh, image that Jordan has here on the slide, that's an example of what layout actually looks like when you open the app. And what's really cool about it is you can even actually replace, like, if you wanted to replace the top right-hand um, photo there with a video, you could do that. You could make a quarter of this little picture here a video, and the rest still images. So if you do have property videos, or you've taken one uh, recently when you've gone to the house, you can even put that within an Instagram post of a layout. So. It gives you a lot of flexibility, and it's definitely a great tool to promote yourself with Instagram. And that's an iOS um, and an Android app as well, so it works for both devices. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, it's really, really a, a great tool. The other thing we're going to do, guys, um, there's an app called Crowdfire. So Justin's going to type that into the um, into the chat box, but it's called Crowdfire. And what it is, it's a great application to allow you to um, build your following and you'll be able to go through and if you have a, a realtor that you think is doing a really great job you can actually start to follow people who are following them and start to build connections with those people so it's really really cool for building your Instagram following um, and uh, we highly recommend it so it's great also it also works with Twitter as well so one of the other interesting things you can do with Crowdfire is um, you can actually go within the app and see who's tweeting locally around you. Um, so it's another way if you, if you don't want to, say you're in a small town, um, like I, I live in a town of 60,000 people, and if you go into Twitter and search, you know, um, I just got a job in Weston, Florida, there might not be a lot of responses. So if you live in a small town um, and you're interested in connecting with people who are around you, Crowdfire is a great way to do that. It'll show you all the people with Twitter accounts within and you can set the parameters of five miles or ten miles, so it'll show you what users are uh, tweeting within um, your area, and then you can choose to interact with them or follow them uh, at your discretion. So um, it's another great way to use the app. Again, it's called Crowdfire, so we recommend everybody uh, download that that's looking to grow their following, which I hope is everyone. <laughs> so next year, I just want to talk about Instagram and, and a little bit more on the location tagging. So you see here, this is actually a post that I put out. And what you want to do when you tag locations, so this is at Soho Studios down in Miami. And you're able to tag you know, either, hey, we're in Miami, or you can get down to more specific locations. What I would say you want to do is actually be more specific, because then other people who are there and around um, will be able to go in and see those photos, and you have a better chance of sticking out. The next part is, and the great part about Snapchat and Instagram is they demand authenticity. So you can't advance schedule any posts. So if you can't advance schedule any posts, it really, you know, it, if you're posting in real time, it demands that authenticity and you won't, it doesn't feel like you're talking with a robot, right? So here's a picture of um, Justin and another guy on our team down at a Facebook, um, a Facebook event down in Miami, right? And it was just simple, hey guys, let's snap a photo. We got the little thing, great, post that. That's an easy way to create content. So it's just a matter of getting in the mindset of, okay, we're going to create content regularly. We're going to do it, but we're also going to make sure that we do it properly. We're going to tag them. We're going to use the Snapchat, um, sorry, the hashtag, and 
that's going to help us build our following, right? This is a great, nothing really overly special about this photo, but it's us and it's our branding and, and it's, it's just done properly. And it's the same thing in real estate, right? You don't need to always knock it out of the park with every photo, but you just got to be consistent and be on there. So now what we're going to move into, we are going to move into Snapchat. So just to get a feel for the crowd, guys, can you um, t type in, um, yeah, just once again, guys, if you have Snapchat on your phone right now installed, type yes into the chat box. Always interesting to see who, how many people are on Snapchat because Snapchat is definitely one that has some, you know, people have some different feelings on it. So I'm excited to get into this one. Okay. So, okay. It looks like it's about a 70-30 split from people who have it. Um, and then people who don't about 30%. But I will say we had a couple of people say, yes, I have it, but I haven't really used it. So that's what I want to talk about today. Snapchat is got this, you know, so for those of you who don't have it, here's what Snapchat is. Snapchat allows you to take a photo or a, a quick video and then you're able to send it to people or post it as kind of a story. Think about it like a Facebook status. And then what it does is it will delete itself. Um, if you put it on the story in like the status type place, it will delete itself within 20 uh, at a 20 after 24 hours of posting. If you send it to somebody personally, it will delete itself after they watch it. So it's 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 a huge app right now. Um, one of the misconceptions about it, though, is that it's only for young kids, right? So how many people how many people on this on this webinar? Right, saw Facebook the first time and thought, oh, I'll never get one of those. Right, that's that's for young kids, that's for university kids, that's not, I won't get one of those. Right, so a, a lot of people are saying yes. Some people are saying no, not me, I was on it, I was on it early. But most people are saying yeah, you know. Now, obviously the majority of, every, of everyone in America, we got 93% of Americans are on Snapchat, or sorry, on Facebook. So obviously, Facebook won, right? Snapchat right now is the opportunity. So Snapchat is Facebook. When everyone else is saying, hey, don't get on this, or that's for teenagers, we actually know that 55% of the users on Snapchat are 25 and older. We also know that the millennial generation is gonna be the biggest home buying and selling, ge selling generation of all time bigger than the baby boomers. So if we look at it as, okay, millennials go from ages 22 to 35, right? We're able to get that top half where the people who are actually interested in purchasing homes, those 28, 29, 30, 31 year olds, they're on Snapchat. And if they aren't on it right now, they're coming fast. So this is where the opportunity comes is you have the ability to land grab and get people's attention far before all the other businesses in your neighborhood are on Snapchat and they've changed the ad model and it's become something similar to Facebook where people have found out how to schedule things. This is where the real opportunity is. It's like getting on Facebook in 2006 with a business page or getting on Twitter halfway through 2008, right? There's a great opportunity to connect with people and people are starving for it. So, yeah. No, I, th I was just going to add, Jordan, I think that, you know, everyone on this webinar would probably agree. If we ask the question, does the future of social media um, have more to do with posting still image pictures or video? I think everyone would agree that video is going to be the future of social media marketing. And when we, um, you know, look at, at websites like Facebook and Snapchat, you may think that Facebook would be, you know, a much bigger platform to be posting videos. But the truth of the matter is that more videos are posted to Snapchat every day and more minutes are spent watching videos on Snapchat every day than Facebook. And that's done all within an app as opposed to Facebook, which obviously has a, a huge uh, website as well as mobile apps. So um, I just think it's really, it's really clear that, that video is going to win this battle and Snapchat has really you know, poised itself to be one of the leading apps along with Instagram um, in the video market. So it's, just, it's a great thing to keep in mind, I think, going forward. You know, you hit the nail on the head, Justin. It's it's where th it's where everything is going. So 
we want to give you guys the value right now to say, okay, hey, if you get on early, you know, you don't have to think of this thing as a giant money maker right now, but it's a giant opportunity right now. So what you see here is actually a snap code. Um, so these are how you how you get people to add you. Um, they can take a screenshot of this snap code uh, right within Snapchat. So if you open up Snapchat and take a picture of that, you will then have me on Snapchat and you can see me talking about advice. This is what other people are doing too. So what I would do is search for, go and actually look for people that you think, hey, that person is doing a great job or you probably have seen a couple businesses promoting Snapchat. Go and, and follow them. Um, you can follow them by username or by snap code and you'll be able to see, okay, this is how people are using it. To build your Snapchat following, because there is no natural discovery in Snapchat, one of the things you're going to want to do is use your other networks to grow your Snapchat following. So right here, I took a photo uh, on January 14th. We had a webinar that day. We were, we were hopping on, and we had 1,100 people on it, right? So I said, oh, I took a Snapchat of it. I remember when we'd get five people to these, right? It's kind of talking about the days when we first started doing these. And though that was a Snapchat, you can actually download your Snapchats and repost them elsewhere. So if you make a video, you can repost that video on Instagram, or you can repost that video on a Facebook, on a Twitter. So tying in what we thought about earlier and what we learned earlier with Twitter, right? Do, do you guys see how the application Twitter and direct or in search and Twitter could be a great tool for building a Snapchat following? All we have to do is go to Twitter, type in hashtag Snapchat, hashtag real estate, or hashtag realtor, right? Hashtag your area. And you're going to see a ton of people Snapchatting away. So here's just a, a random guy I pulled named Neil, right? He's on there and he's tweeting saying, I want to connect with realtors. Snap me your QR code. So now you have the ability to not only connect with people who may be potential customers and buyers, uh, but you have the potential to link up and connect with people who are experts in the field, who maybe, you know, they sell the amount of units that you want to sell this year. And you think, how are they doing it? But they're giving tips and tricks on Snapchat. So, there, so there's really a great opportunity to, to learn as well as to cultivate leads on Snapchat. So why now, right? One of the things, we can tell you all the stats, right? Snapchat just became um, the place where people consume the most video. The audience is, though your audience might not be there now, they're heading there. And if you take a look at, a, if you're at a coffee shop, next time you're there, or maybe some of you guys are doing it right now, right? You're listening to this, but you're scrolling through your feed, your Facebook feed, your Instagram feed. That's going to be Snapchat soon, if it isn't already. The next part, the engagement levels are upwards of 80 to 90%. And what I mean, what I mean by that is if you post a piece of content on Snapchat, 80 to 90% of your following is going to watch it. That is unheard of, right? Right now, if you send out an email, if email marketing is your thing and you send out emails, which are great, they still work, you're getting, on a good day, you're going to get 15%, right? On a really good day in real estate. That industry average is about 14. So if you can, if I told you right now, hey, you can get 80, 90% on Facebook, you would take that, right? And you would run with it. And this is one of those things where, sure, it's full of teenagers and the, the younger generation. And if you aren't comfortable with it or you haven't used it and you have a, a son or a daughter or maybe you have a grandkid who is a teenager and is on Snapchat, seriously, sit down with them for 15 minutes. Get them to teach you how to use it because it is going to be such a tool for you to go in and you can snap open houses as you're doing them. Um, and people are going to want to eat this content up because they know it erases every 24 hours. So they're going to go, they're going to eat it up. Yeah. And I mean, obviously throughout this webinar, you know, our theme has been that, uh, you know, the world is going mobile. I mean, mobile searches are starting to dominate desktop searches. And when we focus a little bit more on real estate, we really see that consumers, you know, have two things that they're really looking for. Um, number one, the trend obviously is going towards mobile. Um, people are searching for homes from their mobile devices. 
I mean, the, the latest 2015 NAR survey of home buyers found that 57% of buyers use mobile website, websites throughout the purchasing process. Um, so we know that that's the direction it's going. Um, the numbers go up every single year, and ignoring the trend, honestly, really isn't an option anymore. And it's why we always recommend that agents get on these mobile first products like Instagram, like Snapchat. Um, Twitter's a great tool for it. And uh, the listing book, um, mobile app is actually another great way that you can sort of take advantage of this mobile shift that's happening. Um, the app actually lets you, once you sign up for listing book, um, you'll get access to your own personal app, which you can then send out to prospects and clients um, that they can then use to search for homes. So it just sort of gives you that one up on the competition. Um, once someone downloads your app and starts searching, you can then see what they're searching for, which homes they favorited in it lets you really quickly find out you know, who's just taking a look and isn't really interested and who's really using the product a lot and is really serious about um, purchasing a home soon. So um, if, you know, with this app, uh, along with the other products that we've mentioned, the other, um, the other apps that we've mentioned throughout the webinar, I mean, I think, Jordan, I think that that's a great way to get on top of this shift, this mobile shift that's happening across the world and particularly in real estate. So, um, with that, I think we'd like to turn it over to, to John from the Listing Book team, John and Nadine, if you're there, um, after which uh, we'll get to some questions. So um, thanks again to everyone for letting, giving us the opportunity to present. Thanks so much to the Listing Book. Um, take it away, John. Yeah, thanks so much, Justin and Jordan. And once again, uh, great information. And uh, I, I trust that the realtors that are with us also are, um, have found this both to be relative and, and relevant and actionable. So um, we want to have an opportunity for your questions specifically, so you'll be able to begin chatting if you want to type your questions in the chat box. I just wanted to real quickly um, say how excited we are to be sponsoring this webinar series and uh, the, the, um, our opportunity to continue to present this kind of information to you is real exciting for us and we appreciate uh, Jordan and Justin. For today, for, for attending, we wanted to make a special offer to you uh, to allow you to explore and enjoy the benefits of our client acquisition and retention platform. And we're offering a free month of our pro subscription, uh, which does include our mobile app, along with a coach to help you take full advantage of the platform. So all, uh, all you need to do is if you'll just take a minute and type in your name and email address we'll have one of the coaches contact you uh, after the event and after our question uh, and answer time. So again, if you just want to type your uh, name and your email address, we'll contact you about that opportunity for a free uh, month subscription and a coach along with the mobile app. So uh, with that, I'll pass it back to uh, Jordan and Justin for questions. Yeah, awesome. great. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Um, so we did have quite a few questions, and they're still coming through, so we'll try and address as many of these questions as possible, but we're getting lots of great questions. Um, specifically, Jordan, Justin, um, we've gotten several questions regarding location and how to determine the location. Uh, should it be city, neighborhood, neighborhood, or a specific address? Do you have some tips and tricks there? Yeah, um, what I would look at it is like this, is um, if you live in a, a big city, so maybe let's set, set the marker at, you know, 100,000 people and up, you would, you would tag it at that. But if your whole county is 100,000 people, then you're probably going to want to tag your county and search with your county. So it really depends on population density is how I would approach it. Um, you know, if you're in New York City, obviously, or Los Angeles, there's a ton of people, ton of competition. So a more really, really uh, narrow approach to your exact um, town or county or whatever may be a little bit better than just taking all of Los Angeles or, or bigger yeah, areas. And I'll say this too, it, um, it does vary a little bit between platforms. With Twitter, um, you'd want to focus more um, on the, the one hashtag, the one location that is most important to you. So like Jordan said, if it's your city, um, then hashtag your city on Instagram. Um, you have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, you can use probably, I, I, I don't think we'd recommend using much more than five hashtags, but what you can do is actually leave the hashtags within the comments of the, of the photo. 
and that'll help people find that photo as well. You don't have to leave it in the actual description of the photo. You can comment on it with more hashtags. So um, on Instagram, you could tag the city, county, you can even tag the state if you like. Great, thanks. Um, we've also had several questions um, regarding the recording for this webinar, so I do just want to remind everybody that we will be emailing the link with the recording out later this afternoon, um, so you can expect to get that. Um, Jordan, next question um, that we've been getting several of is, um, can you differentiate or talk about the difference between the at symbol and tagging somebody and utilizing a hashtag or the pound sign? Sure. So the um, we'll start with the at symbol. So the at symbol is a way of notifying somebody who has that username. So like for my for instance, my my username is at Cave Jordan S. So if anybody types in at Cave Jordan S, hey, what's up? Hello, how are you? I, my phone's gonna buzz off in my pocket, and it's gonna say, you know, Susie Smith, she just tweeted at you saying hello. Now, say we're talking on here and we're, we're, we're talking and I'm tweeting and I say, for the second part of this with the hashtag, and say I'm tweeting that um, I go and I just write in my, on my Twitter feed, hey, I'm leading a webinar right now on real estate training, loving it, and then I go hashtag or pound sign real estate. Now, people aren't going to get a notification in their pocket, but what they are going to be able to do is if anyone is searching and clicks on hashtag real estate, my tweet is going to fall under that category and people will, will be able to see the tweets for anyone who's mentioned hashtag real estate. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we have a few questions regarding Snapchat specifically. Um, one is some recommendations for growing followers. Um, and then we also had some questions regarding Snapchat. Can um, agents post their circle pics videos directly to Snapchat? And also, can QR codes be utilized on Snapchat? Um, OK, so we got circle pics videos, QR codes. Um, and OK, let's, let's start with um, circle pics videos. So I wouldn't recommend posting um, well, one, you, you can't post content on Snapchat that is already um, made elsewhere. So you can't take a video on your phone and post it on Snapchat. It has to be a live recording. Also, um, a lot of times those, you know, they're still photos, right? And what we want to do is if you go to the properly, if you just take out Snapchat and make a quick video of you panning the kitchen saying, love the kitchen in this place and add that to your story. It's going to take you know three four minutes to make a really good story about the property, and I think that's way more valuable um, to the end user because one, it gives them your personal touch with your voiceover. You can be in the Snapchat if you want, doing it in selfie style, um, or you can. It, it's just really really it adds more dimensions and more value to the user, and that's what we want to do. Um, and then, sorry, what was the second half of that question, Nadine? Yeah, it was specific. Well, there was um, QR codes and then also specifically regarding growing followers on Snapchat. Okay, so um, with QR codes, uh, I'm not really sure how um, the, the Snapchat QR code is something I'll, which I'll bring up here. I'll show in the on the presentation. But so here's a Snapchat QR code. And what you're going to want to do is if you go into Snapchat, it's going to say, um, it, it, it's going to say your snap code right when you log in. If you hit the little ghost symbol uh, in Snapchat, you're going to be able to go through and find this QR code. And what this code is, is it's a great thing to share and to get to kind of go on the second part of this question is take this QR code, which Snapchat gives you, and repost it using Twitter search, using Facebook business pages, repost it. And, and go there. You can actually build your following through seeing people who are already talking about Snapchat. The other thing you could do is you could post it on your Facebook business page and say, I'm on Snapchat, ready to go, let's connect. And you could put this photo and you could boost that for 
10, 20 bucks to people and target people through Facebook boosting. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. People who are in your local area who are 30 years of age and older and have Snapchat. And then you would get real people engaging and following you on Snapchat. Fantastic. So lots of good information. And inevitably, we always get this question on all the webinars that we do. Um, usually, it's uh, something to the effect of, I get really excited to learn about new ways to promote my business and to lear uh, learn how to leverage these tools. However, I get overwhelmed and ADD-ish. Any thoughts? So any recommendations, Jordan, on how realtors can still leverage tools in a manageable way? Um, and how often they should be posting. Yeah, for sure. I think this is honestly um, the problem that I see the most right now in real estate is, you know, a new app comes out, a new program, and it's in, it's honestly in any business. It's, you, you get your hands on it and you're really excited, but then you don't see the immediate return, so you're on to the next new and exciting thing, right? I think what it comes down to is making a conscious effort. Maybe it's you just put a five-minute reminder in your calendar for every day at 105. Like, think of a Snapchat. Create a Snapchat, and you'd have to remind yourself because it takes about 30 seconds to make to make a Snapchat, right? It could be a, simply a, a Monday morning selfie. Happy Monday, everyone. And it because you don't always have to knock it out of the park every day, but you, like I said earlier, you've got to be consistent. So what I think it just comes down to is um, making it a habit, and a good way to start doing that is scheduling, um, just putting it in your calendar and trying to get, you know, three to, even if you just did a Snapchat, if you did three to five a week, I mean, you're still doing so many more, so much more than every other person. Especially and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll add this, Jordan. Uh, Jordan and I are both kind of uh, habit junkies. We're very big on establishing habits. And I think one of the things that we both do to try and make habits take shape is you look for triggers. Um, so one for me is I decided at the beginning of the year that I wanted to start tweeting more. Um, one of the ways that I have used a trigger to start tweeting more is anytime I'm in line anywhere, I open my phone and I tweet something. So that's my time when I contribute to Twitter. So I don't get overwhelmed with thinking it all day every day. Oh, I should be tweeting more. I just know that that's the time when I should be posting something. And it can work the same way with Snapchat. You know, when we go to client meetings, we're sure that we take a Snapchat of where we're going. Or Friday afternoons after work, we make sure that we post a Snapchat. So it could be, you know, if for a realtor, it could be every single time, you know, I walk into an open house or, um, you know, I'm setting up, I'm going to take a Snapchat to show people what I'm doing. And once you sort of establish that trigger, the habit becomes a habit and uh, you, you stress about it less. It's not so overwhelming. Yeah, one, um, one trigger that I really love that I've seen some realtors do is uh, closing, Snapchatting uh, when folks are signing closing documents or keys are being handed over. That's a real warm and fuzzy and that's a great trigger as well. Absolutely. Cool. So um, we've had a couple questions too related to data and using these apps. Um, obviously, you know, everybody uh, has a different data provider and different data plans, but um, any insight into how much data is required to run these apps, um, particularly if you're running multiple apps? Um, yeah. So it's really, it depends on um, how much you use it. One of the things I would do for anyone who is worried about data is the more apps you have, go in and actually uh, adjust their settings because though you may not know it, um, people actually, or the app, sorry, a lot of apps randomly check and use your data when your phone, you might not even have them open. Uh, Snapchat isn't a monster with data, um, but I would recommend you know, using it at things, using it at the office, or using it at places where you do have Wi-Fi for the most part. Um, and, and the more followers that you do have on Snapchat, or the more people that you follow, excuse me, on Snapchat, the more data it's gonna use because Snapchat continually refreshes um, people's stories. So what you can do, which I recommend and I do myself to save data, is if you go into your settings and then click on the Manage tab in Snapchat, you'll, be, you'll see a little tab there that says Travel Mode. Just keep travel mode on at all times, and what that does is it reduces Snapchat's mobile data use. 
um, from now on, once you turn travel mode on, you'll have to click on people's pages for the uh, content to load. So you'll only be loading content from people that you want to see, and it saves on data big time. And uh, guys, just so everyone knows here, I am putting a link right now into the chat. And what that is, is that's actually a registration for our next webinar, which will be a deep dive into Facebook and Facebook marketing with real estate. So if you have liked what you heard today and want more of it, please click through. And um, we're excited to come back for another webinar with the, the Listing Book team and hopefully provide some more value. Um, yeah, so to, I was just going to mention, true to our sort of theory, this will be held on the 15th of March. Great. Um, so we're trying to get through all these. Uh, we've got over 200 questions still coming in. So um, we do apologize if we don't get to your specific questions. We're trying to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and um, is there a... Um, to field some questions, we've got interested in further social media support. Um, for those interested in further social media support, sorry, was that the question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. So what we'll do is, um, if you see here on the last page, um, send send an email to um, to the listing book team or to us, and we can then. Um, we can answer any questions you guys have or anything there. Or if you want to Snapchat me a question, um, I'll be answering Snapchats for probably about the next hour after this. Um, so feel free to snap me a question um, if you think of something afterwards. And uh, yeah. Perfect. OK. Um, I think we've got time for a couple more questions. We're going to try to get through some more of these. Um, is there a time of day that is best to post um, on these networks, specifically Snapchat and Twitter? Um, well, the story does last for 24 hours. Um, so you're, you're in luck at any time um, with Snapchat. So what I would say with Snapchat is just not Friday at midnight. Um, but what I would say with Twitter is Twitter you want to be between that kind of 10.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. sweet spot if you're talking anything to do with uh, professional topics and then anything personal throughout the night. Because what it comes down to is the busiest, busiest time on the Internet is, um, is 1 o'clock Eastern. That's when everybody gets back from lunch. And what do they do? They get on social media. Um, but it's also the most competitive time. So if you do tweet at 6, 7 p.m. at night, you know, Though not as many people may see it, you are in a less competitive um, spot, so you you might actually get better engagement. So I would look at trying both out, seeing what works with your following. Um, we do have a couple people searching for you, Jordan, uh, on Snapchat, and are not able to find you. Um, it is Cape Jordan, correct? Yep, I just typed it in. It's all one word. Thank you. Okay, so a couple more questions here. Um, we've got some questions about from people that have maybe two different brands that they're trying to promote. Um, do you have some recommendations on how to keep branding consistent when using these tools, um, or if accounts should be consolidated? Yeah, for sure. So if it's a personal brand, so say it's Johnny Smith and Johnny Smith, you're a realtor, but then you also um, are a lawyer, right? Then it's one account, right? You're Johnny Smith, you do real, you do real estate and you do law. But if you're Johnny Smith, the realtor, and you also own, you know, Johnny's Pizza or Johnny's Trucking, and co those need to be two separate accounts so if it's all personal if your business is all personal both are personal branding then I'd put it as one uh, because you're really you're selling you know yourself as the brand and that's where you're positioning yourself as an expert both in real estate both in law um, for example but yeah if you have a, a business 
and this is anything else that's not personal, it could be selling t-shirts, pizza, whatever, um, that would need a separate, a separate account. Right. Thank you, Jordan. Um, so I think that concludes our Q&A session. Um, anything to add or, John, anything on the listing book side to close off with? Well, again, we really appreciate your time, Jordan and Justin, and all the, uh, the wisdom you've given us in these new areas that we can take advantage of to promote our businesses. And just to remind everybody, on March 15th, you can click the link for our deep dive into uh, Facebook and, and using that tool. And then uh, also, if you put your name and email address in the chat area, we'd be happy to have a coach follow up with you um, and, and uh, give you an opportunity to work with our pro um, subscription, which also has the mobile account. So thank you so much for your attendance today, and have a great day of sales.